Hey everyone, so this is going to be a video about how I do transferring to metal. Uh, we're going to be doing this with a laser printer and uh, I think it also works with a photocopier. And uh, let's get started. So I first found this when I was going through engraving stuff. I went to Steve Lindsay's website and uh, trying to sort through all this stuff. Uh, I did find, where is it? Transferring. And uh, you can see at the top there, he's got an inkjet method as well. But uh, this is the method that I, I found worked for me. And uh, he's actually using a Damar varnish. But uh, we're using a Krylon Crystal Clear, which I found at Michael's. I think it's like 10 bucks a can. But uh, it goes pretty far because you only need a little bit. And uh, anyway, so let's dive right in. We're going to take... We're going to take our design into Photoshop. In this case, I'm just using my logo because I have that on hand. And uh, we're going to press enter and set that. Then we go up to image, image rotation, clockwise or uh, horizontal. And then we go back up to adjustments and we're going to go to black and white turn that gray and because my designs all red it's pretty easy we're just gonna drop that slider right down to black and ideally you want your design to be all black um, so you can see it best uh, then we're gonna do we're gonna save this and I'm gonna change the format to JPEG because we don't need anything too crazy make sure it's a copy and then title it whatever you want and put it wherever you want and hit save Save, and I'm going to make sure that my file size is as large as possible, because why not? Okay. And I'm using Pages, because I have a Mac, and I, I, I like this program for a, for a few reasons, and I'll show you why in a sec. Let's just find it here. Drop that in. Good. So the reason I like it is because I can zoom out and see the whole page. And if I grab the corner here, you can see it gives me the exact image dimensions which is great because then I can just resize it and I can base the height off of what I want so I'm aiming for six centimeters there we go I'll drag that and it's also got these really handy guidelines so I'm just gonna copy this and I can reproduce it as many times as I want and those are the guides so you can arrange it and they're all on the same plane they're all nice and level you can Make sure that they're all, you know, you get the maximum amount out of your page. Uh, I'm just going to rearrange that. And uh, I think I'm actually just going to do four. So let's just have this array. And uh, yeah, we're ready for printing. Where is print? Print, 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 print. There it is. Okay, so we're going to go print. And there's my, my printer model number. It's a Brother HL. 2170W series. So it's like a 10 year old printer, but uh, I got it like Goodwill for five bucks or something. Miraculously, it still had toner in it, which is great. And uh, I, I, this works awesome. So make sure you double check your laser printer. Make sure it's, it's actually going to work. And uh, you can try this method. I suppose that's one way of figuring it out. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go from here and uh, print it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we printed out our design. We're going to take our metal, which in this case is a piece of 16 gauge brass. And we're going to put the fixative on it. this stuff. Best to do this stuff outside because it's really smelly. Based on the size, we're going to pick an area right around here. 
So you don't need to do very much. Just a light misting. And then we're going to take this back inside, kind of let it air out a little bit. And as this dries slowly, it's going to get a little tacky, which is exactly what we want. And that'll give us a little bit of time to uh, get these cut out. All right, so what we're going to do is take our design, and this doesn't apply to everything, because obviously every design's different. But in our case, we're just going to cut out one of these. And because we made it all black in Photoshop, we should be able to see through the paper so we can do some placement. It's not great, especially on camera, but it's usable. And I'm just cutting very, very loosely around this design. It really doesn't have to be perfect because the only thing that's going to come off is the, uh, the actual toner itself. And we've got our metal. And I can feel this is just a bit tacky. So I'm just going to be very kind of efficient where I put this because I want it to be close to an edge so I don't uh, you know take a piece out of the middle of the pizza. And because it's tacky I can just press that down lightly. And now I've got nail polish remover. You don't need anything fancy. As a matter of fact, if you use uh, pure acetone, like what uh, you'd use for cleaning, you're going to get into some issues. It just needs to be a little bit. You, you actually want you know, this yellow or this pink nail polish remover. It, it will work really well. So I've just got some paper towel. I'm just folding this up so I have something a bit more easy to manage. And I'm just going to soak this a little bit. And I'm actually going to squeeze the bottle and kind of press a little bit into the to this stuff. Now it's pretty well saturated. Uh, this is a little trick. I actually use the cap because it's got a nice um, soft rim on it as the burnisher. So I'm just going to lightly dab. You don't want to wipe. You don't want to soak. Just dab so that it all gets wet. And you can start to see your design a little bit better. Oop. Shaky table. And as soon as it gets wet, it's going to start to dry pretty quick because the acetone evaporates. And I'm just going to start to rub just on the design. You don't have to go around anything else. And as it looks drier, I'm going to add a little bit more. Even the stuff that I've already burnished, it's not a big deal. You can go over that again. Oh. So we just had a little bit of a boo-boo there. The uh, my makeshift burnisher kind of tore the paper a little bit, but the paper was like the toner the design was still in good condition so I'm just gonna let it slide for now because this is for a demo purpose and uh, it was just around the edge so I can kind of assume where that's gonna go and since it is my logo I should understand my logo but uh, if that ever happens you may actually have to reprint your design you can also fill it in with marker if you're confident So, oh, just making sure this is nice and wet. Gotta remember where you are, where you have burnished. So, if you have a system, you want to work from one side to the other. That's appropriate. 
whatever works for you. I'm just going to pick this up. See how that gets a little bit darker as it gets wetter. And up here it was perfectly almost dry. Got to remember that the paper does get uh, what's the word? The paper does get soggy, and it doesn't exactly have a whole lot of strength behind it. So just bear that in mind that you just want to rub, you don't want to be very vigorous with this, just a light bit. Alright, so let's see what we got. So ideally, if you've been gentle, you can just start to peel the paper back, but I will take this over to the sink and I'll give this a little bit of a scrub with a sponge under hot water and the paper will just kind of disintegrate. As you see, it's mostly disintegrating now with a little bit of residue. So I'll go over that in the sink. And uh, the design is very nice and, and bold. And it's very durable, which is the nicest part. It will hold up to the sponge scrubbing no problem and there's that little spot right there where the paper kind of folded but no biggie so this is just peeling off just at my fingertip this is just in the kitchen sink and a light sponge and I'm just gonna lightly rub that until all the paper or residue is gone. As you can see, nothing's actually coming off the design. So this is very durable. I actually use this technique for uh, chasing and repuse as well. The traditional technique is to use, it's called China White. It's like, a, honestly, I don't know what it is. It's like a pigment, I guess. But I would liken it mostly to like a watercolor white paint. It's odd because you don't really paint paint white with watercolors. But anyway, you can buy that stuff, and you just literally transfer it like a, like a graphite transfer, just like a you know a receipt or something. All right, so that's pretty much clean. I didn't have to use soap or anything. Oh, let me just. Focus. Just a little bit of pressure. I wasn't scrubbing enough that I could see any marks on the metal. Just enough to get rid of the paper. The water did most of the work. So from here we're going to go to the jeweler's bench and we're going to cut this out. Uh, only because this is from a big piece. I mean, your, your design maybe it's even bigger. You don't need to do that. And uh, yeah, we'll get this engraved. So thanks for watching so far. If you've only watched this video so far to see the, the transfer, then you can stop watching now. Uh, the rest is going to be engraving. Uh, you can skip to the end to see the final product if you're interested and uh, check out our Instagram if, um, if you want to see some more.
right, so that's been engraved. And now I'm just gonna use this uh, Scotch-Brite wheel and uh, take this off. So the nice thing about this stuff is that it's durable, but it's not so durable that it'll never come off. All right, let's see if we can focus. So still a little bit on there, down here, but uh, no big deal. I'm actually gonna go back with this and do some background removal, I think, either within the lines or outside of the lines. I'm not entirely sure yet. This was just supposed to be a practice piece, so we'll see. But um, yeah, you can see how the process works start to finish, and I hope that helps people, so. Hey guys, so this is the final product. I decided to uh, do the removal inside the lines, as you can see, and uh, I went really deep. Kind of see some of the depth there. And uh, I think it looks really good. I did most of the background removal with Fordham handpiece. I couldn't tell you what number this is. And a uh, carbide bulber. And then I went back over it with a uh, flat bottom knife edge, various sizes, and finish it off with some stippling. And then the whole thing is got a patina from Jax, brass and bronze blackener. So that just kind of goes into all the cracks, all the little stipples. And then I polished it back with that scotch bright wheel and gave it a nice antique patina. So uh, I think this is going to go on to my homemade hydraulic press and uh, I'll use it like a, you know, a brand badge type of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it overall. I've never done this before or my logo or kanji or anything like that. So it was a learning experience. A little spot there that I kind of messed up, but you know, it adds character first time. So anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't uh, actually film the removal, but uh, you know, can't get everything. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.